Hello, I'm Chad Robert Morgan, Senior Technical Artist here at Double Helix Games. And today we're going to talk about IKFK switching in Maya. When I was uh, when I joined the collective five years ago, the collective later forming or merging with Shiny to form Double Helix Games a couple of years later, one of the first things that uh, I was asked to do was create a way to mimic the IKFK switching they saw in programs like Max and Motion Builder. There's been a couple other solutions posted since then that I've seen that are some of them quite clever and uh, impressive. But we have stuck with this one for five years and going on five projects now for a couple of reasons. Mainly, one, it works. If it ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, but secondly, is because it relies heavily on the MEL code in order to work. And the advantage to that is that over the past five years since I've written this this uh, this system there's been things that I didn't see coming five years uh, ahead uh, changes to the rig new kinds of rigs that we hadn't predicted that we would have to deal with things of that nature um, but because it was all in the mail code all we had to do was uh, make make a new function uh, edit the code and voila it would then work so, before we go on and discuss how we solve the problem, the first thing we need to do, and the first thing you should do whenever dealing with any problem uh, anywhere, and this is just a general life lesson at this point, is analyze the problem. You can't solve the problem if you don't really understand it. So we're going to take some time in this first video to basically just go through what the problem actually is. So this here is simple ikissues.ma, and it's just a simple two-bone chain. Um, if you bring up the outliner, you'll see, first of all, you can see here that this kind of a uh, rust brown color. This one's a rust brown color, but this one's dark, almost black. That's because that last joint is really not part of the IK system. And I can illustrate what happens. If I delete that, you'll see that little end effector went away. And if I click on this, this is my IK handle tool. And that's also in uh, right here, skeleton IK handle tool. But if you click there and then click on the end, you'll see that end effector is generated automatically based on the position of the last joint you selected. Uh, so the joints needed to create the IK handle and create the end effector but once it's built this thing really doesn't do anything uh, as part of the IK system and in fact I can delete that and this is still working you can see here we got rotations on that so So that's why I refer to this as a two joint system because really that third one is just kind of placeholder. So let's get back to, to the issue at hand. What they wanted was to create a system where you can kind of just grab the IK handle, move it around, then grab the joint, move it around, and then grab the IK handle and move it around. Wait a minute it's already doing that hey that's the quickest tutorial ever alright uh, go on to the next page I'm sure there's something else cool in there let's go on um, no unfortunately life isn't this kind it never is that easy I'm just gonna reset it fresh so why can't we just use it it's it's, it's built in a Maya fresh out of the box well Let's start by creating a pull vector control. Now, pull vector control is going to allow us to change the angle of where these joints are lying. You just grab that uh, locator there, and we're going to grab the IK handle, and then constrain pull vector. And that's going to allow us to, as you can see, we can move that around. Okay, problem. That's no longer working. 
So that's a problem. Well, I'm going to use the twist attribute, I hear somebody say. What's the twist attribute? Well, twist attribute is another way to accomplish basically the same goal. Uh, and you can actually use both the twist and the pull vector at the same time, which can get confusing. I, I don't recommend it, uh, but it is possible. If you run the twist, you can see that that white arrow is moving off of this green line. This green line is basically where your pull vector is aiming. And then you can rotate the system off it. This is called the rotation, uh, a rotation disk for the IK system. And that's not creating a constraint, so that wouldn't break our IKF, I, or Maya's IKFK, right? That's true. However, I have some issues with that. For example, let's twist that around. And we'll move this around, right? Then let's take that joint. Let's zero that out. And zero that out. So now we grab our IK handle, and the joints are back at its base pose. But look what where we are with the IK handle. It's got over 80 degrees of twist in the thing, even though the joint is back to its its base pose. So that can get confusing after a while if you got like two things rotating it at once and they're fighting each other. It's so the same with, with uh, why I don't use the pull vector constraint and the twist at the same time. Because you can do that. If you create that pull vector constraint, you move that up. What you'll see is that will move that, that green line that we saw. And so the twist comes after that. So the twist is like an offset from the pull vector. And so you got like two things controlling it at once and that can be confusing and hard to keep track of so I tend to do one or the other and since I can screw things up with a twist like I just showed you I stick with pull vectors there's an even bigger problem with IKFK switching in Maya we're gonna parent that this IK handle uh, to this locator called IK parent I just select the handle, the locator, hit P. Now I can grab that IK uh, controller there, that little locator, and move it around. And it's broken again. If we reset this, to start it over, if I come here and just group everything, So see, even just grouping it is enough to break it. So that's, I mean, if it's Thursday or you look at a cross-site, it just won't work anymore. So obviously we can't use this in production. It, it's, it's next to useless. So we need to come up with our own solution. So the first thing we that's the first thing we need to do. We we now understand the problem a little bit better. Now we need to understand IK systems in general a little bit better. And I am going to make that a second video. So I will see you next in a little bit in the next video and we're going to talk about IK systems in general.